focusing on the political dimension of uh, the Antimarkovich's program during the uh, culmination of the political crisis in Yugoslavia between 1989 and 1991. Ante Markovic was the Prime Minister of the Yugoslav Federation and the leader of the Alliance of Reformists. Uh, by political dimension, I uh, refer to three aspects. Uh, the first aspect is the attempt by the federal government to restore at least a basic statehood function to Yugoslavia, a, a statehood function which had been growingly undermined by the uh, republics, by the state, uh, sub-state level uh, during the crisis. Uh, the second point is the, the intention of the government to introduce a statewide multi-party system uh, holding all Yugoslav elections, uh, which could reanimate in Markovic's intention a demos, a supranational pan-Yugoslav demos and a democratic relegitimation of Yugoslavia. Uh, and the third aspect is the attempt to relegitimize the uh, cultural and symbolical principles uh, of Yugoslavism, conceived as a supranational concept uh, uh, and not as a unitary and centralistic concept. Uh, the vast literature, the really extremely extended literature which investigates the, the crisis and the dissolution of, of Yugoslavia has usually uh, been focused on the economic and financial side of the Markovic reform, while on the other side uh, his political role has been overlooked, sometimes explicitly neglected. And so in the first section of the article I identify uh, three main macro arguments which I um, which I see that they are widespread in literature. A mark of arguments um, with, are that uh, Mar Markovic was a, a technocrat, a neoliberal oriented politician, and an irrelevant uh, marginal politician in the context of the crisis. Each of these arguments is partially valid, but all of them uh, miss some relevant aspect which uh, must be uh, brought to light in order to have a wider, uh, a more complete understanding of the dissolution of Yugoslavia and of the ideas and political opportunities uh, which existed at the, at the time, which were available at that time. And so I argue that um, Ante Markovic and his political movement did elaborate uh, reflections, plans, narratives, um, also on non-economic subjects, uh, such as, for example, uh, on how to preserve the foundational myths of Yugoslavia, such as anti-fascism, how to uh, re-elaborate and reanimate anti-fascism in 1990, Yugoslav unity, the exceptionalism in foreign policy, meaning that Yugoslavia um, still uh, wanted to present itself as a bridge between East and West, but at the same time uh, still wanted to maintain a privileged uh, position in comparison with the Eastern European countries uh, in its relation with the um, European community, particularly in the context after uh, the, the fall of the Berlin Wall. Also, it was Ante Markovic himself who launched the project of establishing a statewide television, a statewide television channel, UTEL, uh, which would aim to reanimate a pan Yugoslav public sphere and uh, would recreate uh, common frame of, uh, frames of reference throughout the country. Uh, in the second section, the article examines the core of the Markovic plan in order to um, redesign uh, the institutional framework and to reschedule uh, all Yugoslav elections. And here I draw on the relation between founding elections and uh, democratic legitimation in multi-ethnic uh, countries, which has been discussed in literature by Juan Linz, Alfred Stepan and other, other scholars in both uh, conceptual and, and empirical terms. And finally, um, I demonstrate how uh, it were the uh, Republican leadership, particularly those from uh, Slovenia and Serbia, who blocked uh, the Markovic reform. Uh, and so I show that the constitutional crisis of, Yugosla of Yugoslavia should be seen not only as the byproduct of the struggle uh, among republics, but also as the byproduct of the struggle between the republics 
on one side, e even if they had uh, opposite goals, but still had also some uh, common tactics on one side and the federal level on the other side. To conclude, in the end, I, in the end of the article, I suggest that uh, Ante Markovic is still nowadays in the actual uh, post-Yugoslav space, the object of uh, polarized memories in, uh, in collective memories. Um, so there are negative remembrances uh, blaming Markovic either on uh, ethno-nationalist so ethno arguments or also uh, political ideological uh, arguments, uh, which are of course like negative memories, but there, are, there is also a peculiar and more positive memory, or uh, better said, a peculiar nostalgia, which I call anti-stalgia, in uh, a reference to uh, Yugo nostalgia. So it's a specific form of Yugo nostalgia, which is not necessarily a glorification for what was the real Yugoslavia in 1990, uh, but rather it consists of a utopian idealization of what Yugoslavia could have become under an uh, hypothetical uh, transition during the uh, following years.